morning everybody it's Wednesday the cleanup crews here in town are uh, a little bit behind schedule again I think because everyone's on their way to work and they're still out here blocking the streets and there's no way to get around them this time so uh, I guess we're just gonna wait it's a cold one today minus 30 so what they're doing up ahead here is they're taking all the snow off of uh, the median here that's blocking people's or impeding people's view of the road, right? When you're crossing the road. Uh, they're knocking onto the street and then there's a big tractor up ahead in front of this truck here. You can sort of see the plume there. Uh, it's got a massive snow blower on the front of him. And he's blowing the snow into trucks that are rolling alongside him. Like gravel trucks. They're hauling snow instead of gravel. So people who live in climates that don't have snow would find it interesting how we clear off our clear off our medians because you know how it's all piled up over there once it gets too high and you're trying to make a turn or cross over the road it makes it very difficult to see cars coming and it can cause accidents so we have to clear that off a couple of times a year and they are uh, they usually have all of this done before we wake up and before we all go to work but today, for some reason, they must be running behind. See, there's the big snowblower right there. Turning around. It's pretty cool. Come on, start for me. Start for me. I know you're not going to want to, but you have to work to do. Okay. There's the lights. up. Come on. Minus 36. Let's go. <laughs> Not the happiest, but he's going. Yikes. All right, my friends, we're hooked up onto a step deck, open deck. They gave me the option, either a flatbed or a step deck. I always pick a step deck if I have an option, just because the, the deck area where I'm working with is lower. I don't have to reach up as high when I'm tying stuff down. I shouldn't give you my secrets, though. Those are my secrets. Patented ideas. Trucker Josh copyright. Watch out. Okay, so my suspension is just uh, adjusting here. It's not actually leaking, so don't panic. These glad hands are really tight. They're really hard to get onto the trailers. That's good. That means they create a good seal. Just a little bit because they don't have a handle. Mine have a handle here to grab onto. And these don't have that, so it's okay. Hook those onto everything. We'll do our little pre-trip here. We'll roll up the landing gear. There we go. Make sure the truck brakes are on still, right? <laughs> no air leaks. And hey, like I said yesterday, you're gonna be hearing this a lot from me on and off. We're not gonna make the whole vlog about it, but if you guys wanna do this, the same thing I'm doing, you wanna drive here, you wanna pull these vans, you wanna pull these step decks. If you're a Canadian citizen or have a legal right to work in Canada already, you got some trucking experience, you got a good driver's abstract, email me at truckerjosh at keystonewestern.com. Okay, I'll leave the link down below in the description of my videos from now on. If you're looking for work, that's a business email. So I can't just, uh, even though you may want to email me just to say hi, I apologize. It's, it's for business reasons. If you want a job here, let me know. You can chat for a little bit and I can get you in touch with the right people. Maybe where you're working now, you're not too happy with it. Or maybe you just want to get some new experiences. We do all kinds of stuff. Everything but reefer, pretty much. And we cover all of Canada and the United States, except for Hawaii. So 
if you guys are interested in doing what I'm doing, email me. Let me know. I'll put you in contact with the right people and we can get you a job here. We're looking for drivers, company drivers, owner operators. I can hook you up. All right. Compressed air in all the tires, it's fantastic. It's always a good day when the tires are full of compressed air. Much better than that other air that's not compressed. Everything's working back here. Beautiful. License plate light. Yep. Beautiful. I hope these brakes aren't frozen. Okay. This truck actually needs a driver. This is not my usual truck, if you're new to my channel. We have a few trucks like this that need drivers. I'd love it if you'd come here and work with us. We're based south of Winnipeg, Manitoba. We also have a terminal in Southern Ontario in Waterloo. So if you're nearby either of those places, I mean, we even hire people from other provinces too. It doesn't really matter where you live. I don't know, send me an email. We're gonna try to fill these trucks. All right, come on, come on, come with me, trailer. Do not be frozen. I command thee, the name of your Lord, Diesel Weasel. Yes, tires are turning. Yes, ha <laughs> ha. Nice, okay, we're good to go. Let's just make sure it's not gonna fall off here. Nice little tug test, tug test. I get nervous doing tug tests on the ice like this because is it really a tug test if it's just gonna slide on the ice, right? Okay. Right on, okay, I gotta fill out some paperwork or some computer work here, let the government know that I authorize this trailer. I, Trucker Josh. I authorize this trailer and I vouch for it that it is safe to use on the highways and byways of Manitoba and North America. And that if I am lying, I can be fined for that. Rolling into the tight streets here a little bit. There are no European tight streets, but for our big trucks, these are about as tight as you want to get them. Any tighter than this and you won't be able to make it out. But well, what happened to this building? Why has it got those boards all the way across it like that? I bet you that's for like, uh, what? It's right over that nice painting. It's weird. But I bet it's for like putting uh, advertisements on there, like screwing them onto the wood or something, like a big billboard. Huh, I don't. Interesting. I still got his Santa and snowman out on the front yard. Well, I guess we can't talk. We still got our Frosty the snowman on our front deck too. <laughs> he stays up there all winter. Man, did we ever get a lot of snow here this year though. It's been a really snowy winter. They're calling for possible floods this spring already. I hope not. Winnipeg's a river city, so when we get a lot of snow, all of the, like the Red River comes from the US. It's one of the only rivers that flows north in North America. And it, uh, it comes from like south of Fargo, North Dakota. So all the snow that North Dakota has is all coming up here through Winnipeg into Manitoba, up into Lake Winnipeg, then eventually it ends up in the Hudson's Bay. And so springtime, if there's a lot of snow in our region, it all comes like a, it's like a bottleneck right in Winnipeg. You got the Assiniboine River that comes out of the west and meets up with the Red River right downtown at the Forks. And those two converge and it's just a big mess. So I'm hoping we don't have floods this year. That's... The last big flood we had was in 97. It was the flood of the century. And it was bad. It was really bad. 
It'd be nice if they would like widen these streets just a little bit because the, the snow banks are narrowing our, our street here. And it'd be hard for two trucks to pass here already. Good thing it's not like a, a heavy truck route. It is a truck route, but it's not like heavy traffic. Not many of us will be coming down here. I'm lucky that truck up there turned the other way. <laughs> All right, this is our turn coming up here, right beside Elmwood School. Right in here. Nobody coming, nobody coming. Nice. So we're on the east side of Winnipeg right now, east of the Red River. The Red River is that way and it flows north that way. That's where all of this water, all of this snow, once it melts, it's all gonna head that way to the ocean in the Hudson's Bay. Manitoba is pretty low-lying land. It's the lowest part of the prairies in general. <coughs> so all of the uh, all of the water from out west on all the prairies, it all sort of pools up here. Here's my turn coming up here. I'm gonna pick up in here. This is where you have to usually blindside it in, but instead of blindsiding it in this time, I'm just gonna nose right in and I'm gonna back out because I have a sleeper behind me now and I just feel like that's gonna be my best option. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm dragging it into the snowbank there a little bit. Okay. I mean, you get so much snow, where are you gonna put it, right? This wire is hanging down a little lower than I'd like it to. Yikes. Why is this hanging down like that? Well, I didn't touch it. Okay, gotta turn uh, in here. Hopefully there's nobody in there right now already. Ugh. Can I even make this corner? Usually they have this all cleared out for us, but it doesn't seem like they have. Okay, okay, a little bumpy, a little bumpy. That's okay, it's just bumps. Might let this FedEx guy past me here first. No, he's stopping, okay. So I'm gonna have to make a little bit of a three-point turn here. Or can I make it? Can I make it? Ooh, it's gonna be close. It's gonna be close, 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 close. Made it. <laughs> okay, see, it'll be easy to back out. I'll just put the trailer out that way. All right, we made it. Trailer's in. Okay, so we're loading up some of these white crates here. I'm gonna let the guy there do his job and Load me up and uh, see if we can get out of here afterwards. <laughs> all right, I'm all loaded up and now I gotta back out of here. This guy came in here after me. I had to move over so he could get loaded. I have to back out of this tiny space under that tiny road now. And I'm 110 inches wide. I'm a little bit wide, I'm not that wide. You barely notice it, but legally I have to put the flags on there and La da da. I see real close to that pole there in my mirror. Real close. And it's got a guy out on the street watching traffic there for me. Okay. Uh, let's not hit the pole, but let's get very close to it. on the other fence there. When I hit that other post there. Okay. Let's see how we're doing over there. Looks like we're good. Just need to sneak past this pole here now. Really close to it. There 
There we go. Okay. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna rearrange myself just a little bit here. So that I can get a little bit of a better angle. Okay, there we go. You don't wanna hit that fence behind there either, right? I can see my tire there on that fence. All right, he's telling me I can. There we go. Whew. It's tight, but we're out. Oops, <laughs> I banged you guys on the roof. I'm trying to see where my front end is. There you go. We're out. Didn't hit anything. <laughs> and here we go got to be careful with this freight too that we have uh, you can't strap this the straps too tight or you'll damage the freight I got to be careful with everything you don't want to damage the freight though the whole point of trucking is uh, to get freight from point A to point B but that's not the whole thing the whole thing is get it from point A to point B without damaging it Okay, it's very easy to damage freight. Very easy. Less easy to fix it. I don't know that way. Alright, looks like we got an opening. Nice and easy, just like that. Beautiful. Almost like I'm a professional. Almost. Okay, we gotta bring this back to the yard. I'm gonna leave it tied down. And uh, I'm gonna deliver it to Winkler in southern Manitoba on Monday. got this intersection coming up now too. <sighs> Watch my flags there buddy, you see that? Pay attention. Okay, this corner is always kind of, because I got to take that lane too, but if I take that lane and someone turns in trying to use that lane, it really puts everybody in a pickle. So I try to like, wait the boat back here. You can go. I'll wait for you, don't worry. Pedestrians got the right of way. Yikes. Okay. Oh, now they got all these kids crossing the street here yet. Okay. Don't want to hit the kids. That's another goal of the day. You always wake up in the day and you list your goals. And uh, one of the goals is always don't run anyone over. Okay. That's near the top. Oh, this guy's turning here. Turned a signal on last second, or at least I saw it last second. Okay, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it. Ah! Oh no, and he's coming this way, exactly. Ah, oh, man, okay. Oh, now there's someone there. Chaos. Okay, this is exactly what I was talking about. Gotta do the best we can. The streets are narrow. We got it, there we go. No problem. Didn't even hit the curb. Didn't even run anyone over. Didn't even hit anything. That's success in my books. 
take her nice and easy through the school zone here. I try to avoid school zones the best I can. Uh, especially when, uh, I guess it's lunchtime or something, all the kids are out walking around everywhere. Uh, kids when they're out having fun. We were all kids once, right? When we're out having fun, they're not always paying attention. They're just running around, running across the street, don't even look. And I'm coming through here with a slightly wide load. Are you going to pay attention to my flags? Okay. I want to make sure I don't hit the snow banks with the side of the load either. Okay, there we go. We're through the school zone. And we got to meet another truck. Oh, great. Oh, great. Is he going to wait? He's not going to wait. Okay, you're just going to make this difficult. Okay. Okay. He's going to stop there. Make sure I don't hit the curb there. Beautiful. Beautiful. See? Two professionals. We got it. See, I appreciate that when the drivers uh, look far enough ahead to wait like that. That uh, made that whole situation a lot easier. So, uh, thumbs up to that driver, whoever that was. You did a great job. Okay, that was the worst of it. Now the rest of the way isn't that bad. You know, on those stressful, stressful jobs like that, that's when I love my job the most, you know? It might sound weird, but... I love the feeling of accomplishment you get when you get through a sticky situation successfully. I can go home feeling good. I still got a little ways to go yet. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. At least we got through that, the worst of it. gonna pull in and fuel this truck up for the weekend. I'm already at half, half, <coughs> half a tank, excuse me. <clears throat> and I can see one of my straps up front here is already a little looser than I wanted it to be. The freight settled a little bit. So I'm gonna pull in here, grab some fuel and tighten my straps. Not too much though, you don't want to damage the freight. Remember what I was talking about? They do need a little bit. I mean, they do need to do their job. You can't just throw them over and leave them there. They still gotta do the job. Okay, this is the one where that one pump is broken. Let's not pick the broken pump again, okay? I've done that like five times already. Which one, which one? Okay, yeah. Have they fixed it yet? I wonder if they have. I'm gonna take this one. No, I can see it from here already. They still haven't fixed that pump. <laughs> ah, yeah. Ah, yep. All right, it's so right about there. That feels good. I'll let the government know that I am uh, going to be fueling my truck now. Is that okay? Is it okay, Mr. Government Man? Yes, it's okay. They said it's okay. I've got the hours. Good. And shut her down here. Okay, I'll talk to you guys when I'm done here. It's a little bit of an intense day. City driving, right? I don't always have to go into the city. Winnipeg's not that big of a city either, but it's not that small at the same time. It's like a, a little, it's kind of big. Kind of big, kind of small. It's like a small town, big city. I don't know where you would classify it as, but yeah. It's got some tight streets and it's got some... It's not Chicago is what I'm trying to say, okay? It's not Chicago. Though it is called Windy City of the North. It is compared to Chicago because of the, the high winds we have here, just like in Chicago. So I am taking uh, possession of the shop this weekend. Probably not tonight, maybe tomorrow evening. I'll be able to give you guys a little tour of it. I mean, it's not much to show you. It's just a big open space, turning it into what we want it to be. I'm not too sure what that is yet, but I'm excited to grow. 
it's going to be a warm place to keep the truck uh, so at least we don't have to worry about freezing up every morning now again right so there's that build a little studio in there, expand our YouTube business here a little bit. I don't know, all in all, I'm, I'm excited. It's gonna be a good thing. I mean, the best thing is I'm gonna have a nice, warm, dry place to clean and polish the truck and detail it inside and out all year round. So I can finally drive a clean truck. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of work, especially in these seasons where salt and debris are on the road all the time but at least I'll have a spot to get it done now and in the mornings I don't have to fight with frozen airlines that's that's what I'm looking forward to the most that's gonna be good but thinking about calling it the bull snot shop or maybe I'll come up with something else I don't know I was just thinking bull snot because I work with bull snot uh, and their cleaning products right and I always tell everybody, they sell themselves. All I gotta do is get you a can of Bull Snot into your hands and you're sold. You won't ever use another cleaning product again. I don't talk about stuff unless they actually work, you know, if I, unless I actually use them. And they've released in Canada now, which is exciting. So they're available up here now. They're, they're getting the distribution going. I'm gonna help with that the best I can. So I'm excited to see more of their products on our shelves up here in Canada as well. You can get them all across the US already, but uh, that shop is gonna smell like bull snot, which is actually smells really good. If you guys have used their products before, they actually smell really good. They don't have that chemically smell or that chemical smell that a lot of cleaners have. It actually smells really good. And that's what the shop is gonna smell like because that truck is gonna be shining. Same with this pickup. It's gonna be shining year round. That's the plan anyways. I mean, I know I can't keep it perfect every single day, but I'm gonna try. Oh, and I got sent to the superstore again. Oh boy. Let's see what we come out with. I have specific instructions to come back home with chicken likes, uh, garlic toast, and salad, Caesar salad. Let's see what we find. And that is the biggest problem we face, isn't it? We need to eat every day. At least I do. I like eating every day. It's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, I do it first thing every morning and, uh, you know, in the evening after work and usually all the way through work too. I got my little munchies, I got my lunch that I get, that I, that gets brought along with me. And then like some fruits and stuff that I like eating. But the thing about eating is you gotta go to the store to get it. And the store costs money. <laughs> so how are things where you guys are at right now? Is uh, the price of food stable? Has it been going up? I know uh, a lot of people are panicking because everyone keeps saying, oh, the prices of everything are going up. Uh, has it really gone up where you're at? Like, really? Has it honestly really gone up considerably? How much has it? I haven't really noticed because I haven't been paying attention. I have definitely noticed the price of fuel going up, obviously. But uh, for food, I haven't been paying that much attention to it. And I'd like to know, have you guys noticed? Is everything going up like they say it is? Or is that just fear-mongering and people just trying to get everybody all worked up? Because you got to be careful. Fear sells. Fear sells, and people are going to try to sell you fear because that'll get you to click on their, their news article or their ad. It'll get you panicking to buy more stuff. So you got to remember fear sells, and you got to sort of pick apart what is just a little bit of fear mongering and what's actual truth. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if prices keep going up after the last two years that we've had. I expect it, I expect everything to go up in it. But, uh, let me know where you're at. How's food doing where you're at? And what part of the world are you in? Is, uh, you guys doing all right still? So far, we haven't had any shortages on our shelves. The Walmart and Steinbach's always got shortages and people are always panicking, but that's nothing to panic about because those shelves are always empty. For some reason, Steinbach Walmart is like the last stop on the distribution list for like Walmart headquarters or something. So they're, they're always short on everything. You gotta get there early or they're short and then they don't get their delivery till like a week later or something. Uh, but that's just because of the logistics and maybe they're looking for drivers too. We're all looking for drivers and I'm going to plug us one more time here. If you want to work with us, uh, my email address is truckerjoshkeystonewestern.com. That's a business address. Uh, let's just try to keep it uh, serious inquiries there if possible. I, I would appreciate that. Uh, less for me to sift through there. I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, you're eligible. And if you're eligible, I'm going to fire you straight through to who you need to talk to so that we can get you in a truck fast. We could use your help. We're busy. 
we're busy and we got trucks that need drivers and on that note i will see you tomorrow take care have a great weekend everybody uh tomorrow i'll show you the shop that we're moving into